Today's adventure brings me to Columbus, Ohio. I will be covering the filming locations for the movie Aftermath featuring Arnold Schwarzenegger. This movie was made in 2017, but it is based off true tragic events that occurred July 1st of 2002. Now, most of the movie was filmed in or around Columbus, so I'm going to try and find some of the locations from that movie, and we're going to start right here at the John Glenn International Airport right here in Columbus, Ohio, where most of the beginning of the movie took place. The following video you're about to watch is based off of true events that occurred July 1st of 2002. A passenger airplane carrying 71 people from Moscow to Barcelona suddenly collided with another cargo aircraft traveling from Italy. This is the story about Vitaly Kaliuev. All right, these are the escalators that Rowan comes down once he gets into the airport. This light right here and this little white thing on the back of the other escalators can be seen very briefly in the background. So these are the escalators that Rowan goes down once he gets into the airport. Okay, so we're here at the John Glenn International Airport in Columbus, and in the movie we see Roman walking through the airport, and he comes up and looks at this screen right here to check the flight status of his wife and his daughter as he anxiously awaits, and he's kind of standing right here inside of this blue square. You see that blue stripe right there? He's kind of standing right through there. And as he's checking the flight status of their flight, it says C desk. So, he walks over here, somewhere along this wall of the flight company that he's checking, and he says, I'm sure there's no problem, and then he says, I'm checking the flight status of AX-112, and another receptionist walks up and she says, please follow me. And I believe the offices that they were at were probably somewhere back in there. Okay, so after he comes out of the offices and he gets the bad news, he comes out walking this way and there's an overhead shot and all these booths here are closed and he's walking down this hallway by himself and he can be seen walking through this little part of the cement right here, how it's designed. When Roman's character finds out the bad news, the view from right here can be seen of him sitting in his car it's a shot about like this you can see this light post over here off in the distance there's a yellow bottom to it right there and this number five can be seen off in the distance too along with those lights at the end and he was parked probably about halfway down the tower right there in the middle of your screen is the air traffic control tower that is the very tower that Jacob worked at in the movie. He goes up in there and he's talking to his friend. His friend goes to the bathroom and then he misses the calls and he's trying to get everything all situated. And then he turns around and sees the planes on the monitors. They're getting closer and closer and eventually they turn red and they disappear off the screen. Okay, I'm here in Greenlawn Cemetery in Columbus, Ohio. The scenes that were filmed here is where Roman's wife and his daughter were both laid to rest. It took a while to figure out exactly where the tombstone was at. The tombstone was brought in just for the movie, and I did a little digging, did a little research on trying to figure out where it was located, and I found the exact spot. So let's go see Roman's wife and his daughter 
were laid to rest. Okay, so after the tragic passing of Roman's wife and his daughter, he comes to the cemetery. There's an overhead shot of him walking through the grass, and he comes up to their headstone, and these little headstones can be seen very briefly in the background along with this tree, and it cuts off sort of right here at this headstone. So their final resting place, the tombstone, would have been somewhere around right here. It says Melnick on it. And he places flowers down and there are pictures of his daughter and his wife on the headstone, but there is no picture of Roman yet. Okay, so after the whole ordeal with the airport, Jacob is pretty much approached to what I believe by the FBI, and they only give him one option to walk away from this situation. He is to change his name, change his job, and change his location. He doesn't want to, he's really upset about this because that means he would have to leave his current life with his wife and his son, and he doesn't want to. But he has to take the deal for the safety of everybody around him. And the FBI put him up in this apartment right here behind me, these are called the Canterbury Apartments on Olentangy River Road in Columbus, Ohio. Now, he's really upset by this, and he spends quite some time alone. He goes to therapy and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And he has to change his name to Pat Gilbert. And this is where he starts his new life. So right there are the apartments that Pat Gilbert has to move into. I'm not entirely sure which floor he was on, because there is, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 floors. But it is way up there. Okay, so I'm downtown Columbus here, and I'm going to be real quick about this location. This is where uh, Tessa meets up with Jacob, aka Pat Dielbert. So Jacob's sitting in what it looks like to be a diner along the road right here. Those windows can be seen, and he's sitting right there in front of the window eating, and there is a reflection. And we could see the state house. You can kind of see the state house right there in the reflection. And then there's an inside shot of them sitting there talking. And the shot is kind of like this. You can see this little booth right here along with the state house in the background. You know, the big building kind of reminds me of a skate ramp. But uh, yeah, this is where that scene was shot when Tessa meets up with Jacob. Okay, so I'm here at the OSU campus in Columbus, Ohio, home of the Ohio State Buckeyes. And this is the scene where Roman meets up with Tessa and he asks of a favor of her. That sky bridge right there can be seen in the shot of Tessa and her group walking across. And as it pans down, we see Roman standing right here in front of this uh, cement metal pole thing window and it shows him kind of like right here and those windows and that door and these lights can be seen in the shot as well so this is the view that Tessa would have seen as she was walking out the doors and she sees Roman standing there across the yard he's standing right here in front of this window that particular um, long silver thing right there and there is a staircase that can be seen just just to the left of him going right there and over here the uh, trash can has been moved about five or six feet but if you follow the edge right here all the way up to the window one two three four five six he's standing right there in front of that window so as Roman is standing here next to this window Tessa walks up and the first thing that Roman says is, I need a favor. She says, okay. And then Roman then proceeds to say, I need you to help me find him. And he is looking for who is now Pat Dilbert. He's on the hunt for Jacob. So as I'm standing right here is where Roman stood. As he was looking across the yard right here. Those are the doors that Tessa would have been walking out with her group of friends.
So I'm over here at the Golden Donuts Diner in Columbus, Ohio, and this is the scene in the movie where Roman meets up with Tessa, and she's hesitant about giving up Jacob's information, and she's seen walking through the door right there, and she comes walking by, and Roman is sitting right here at this last booth right here, and the shot is about right here of them sitting at the booth, and she ends up giving him Jacob's information and she says I hope you deal with this in the right way all right real quick I'm gonna do this location this is Vance outdoors in Columbus and this is where Jacob comes and he buys a gun and we're not sure what intentions he has to do with that gun but that Vance sign can be seen in the background as he's getting in his car and I'm not going to go in here because I just don't really feel like going inside of a gun store and recording a video. But anyway, that uh, Vance sign can be seen when he's getting in his car and he puts the uh, gun that's in the case in the passenger seat. Okay, so after Tessa gives Roman Jacob's new information about his new identity, she's real hesitant about giving him the information. She says, I want you to use this in the correct way. And Roman says, there is only one correct way to use this information. So, Roman eventually ends up finding out where Jacob, aka Pat Dilbert, lives. And he lives right here in the Canterbury Apartments. At first, he goes up to the apartments and he rings the doorbell. And Jacob's wife answers. And there's nobody there. Roman is gone. There's nobody at the door. So next we see Roman back in his hotel room. Well, he's growing more and more frustrated as time goes on and he just completely loses his mind. So Roman has officially had it. So he looks out of his window. We see the reflection as you can see behind me, the corner of Coles right there, and then the Canterbury Apartments. So next, Roman walks through the apartments up to Jacob's room, rings the doorbell, and then Jacob, aka Pat Dilbert, answers the door. Now, Roman shows Jacob the photo that he's been carrying around in his jacket of his wife and his daughter that have passed away due to the tragic plane accident. And he goes, I want an apology for this. So Jacob then flips out closes the door behind him and says you can't be here my wife and kids are here you need to leave or i'm going to call the cops and he goes here roman says here i want apology for this and he just keeps showing jacob the photo and then jacob knocks the photo out of roman's hand and as roman goes to pick up the photo he grabs a knife that was in his jacket turns around and stabs jacob right here in the uh, stomach and then Jacob is uh, kind of hunched over like this and he just kind of steps back into the apartment building and then Roman stabs him again right here in the neck, on the side of the neck. And Jacob falls over on the floor bleeding out profusely and he tries to go up to the desk that's beside the door, the front door, and there's a gun that he had hid in one of the drawers. And as Roman walks in, he sees that he's trying to go for the gun in the drawer and he shuts the door or shuts the drawer so he can't so Jacob can't have the gun. And then as Roman is standing there watching Jacob bleed out, his wife, Jacob's wife and his son come running out of the back rooms from uh, putting their PJs on and brushing their teeth and they start screaming, they start yelling, and they grab each other and they go and they sit on the couch. Now, I don't know if anyone caught this detail, but when Roman goes and sits on the couch beside Jacob's wife and his son, the photo that he carries around in his jacket of his own wife and his daughter, he recreated with Jacob's wife and his son. Yeah, that is a nice little detail that I had just recently had found out. But that is where Jacob meets his demise, aka Pat Dilbert. And uh, that's not the end of Roman's story, but that is unfortunately the end of Jacob's story. Okay, so Roman is frustrated in his hotel room. He pretty much goes nuts and he looks out the window and it's a reflection. And in the reflection, we see right over here, this is a Coles by the way, 
I don't believe the coals was here. I mean, it might have been during filming, but we see the corner of the coals right here. These trees weren't here for the filming. I mean, if they were, they didn't have any leaves on them. But you could tell right in the background, the corner of this coals and these apartments right here. He's getting ready to go after Jacob, AKA Pat Dilbert. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure which hotel room was Roman's, but there is a shot of him pulling out of a parking space right over there and this uh, electrical pole can be seen in the background as he is going after Pat Gilbert aka Jacob. After 10 years in prison Roman finally gets free and the first place that he goes right after prison is the final resting place of his wife and his daughter and he can be seen in a shot just like this walking down this road right here this headstone can be seen in the shot along with this one and it's kind of hard to see but back there there are like three trees that are kind of slightly bent right there those can be seen way off in the distance as well and this location really makes sense because after doing research and him walking down this road right here if we turn directly behind me there is a tree right there and that is right beside where his wife and his daughter are buried. And I know the surefire way of knowing it is because of this headstone right here can be seen in multiple shots as well. So right here on this road where I was just at, Roman comes walking up this hill right here and there's a specific headstone that can be seen in the next shot. And it's this one right here says Ingersoll on it. It's a real close-up shot, kind of like this. And he's seen walking real slow right through here. So right now I'm going to show you the path that Roman took as soon as he got out of prison to come visit his wife and his daughter at the cemetery. So like I said, the trees are right there. He walks along this road right here. Right there is the headstone that can be seen along with that one right there. Right here to my left is the Ingersoll headstone that can be seen in a shot when he's walking through the cemetery. Oh, I don't like this. Try and walk around here. Yeah, so right here is where the headstone was that says Melnick on it. Roman's wife and his daughter, like I said, the exact spot. So as Roman makes his way up to the headstone, this tree right here can be seen in the shot along with this headstone. And there's one way over here, right there, that can also be seen. And when Roman comes up to their uh, final resting place, he puts his daughter's necklace right on the side of it. And we still can't figure out who is following him. So as Roman is standing here at the final resting place of his daughter and his wife, the strange person following him comes up and stands beside him and says, hi. And they both just kind of stand there awkwardly. And Roman looks over and says, can I help you? And the strange person says, yeah, I'm a little bit lost. I'm looking for the exit. And then Roman says, 
it's just through there you make a couple turns and then Roman says come on I'll take you and the guy says are you sure he says yeah it's no problem Roman would have been pointing off in that direction which is actually towards the exit where I'm currently standing at is in the back of the cemetery so it's a little bit there's a little bit of a ways from here to the exit there's only one exit and one entrance to this place and it's way way out there okay so here we are towards the end of the movie these rocks on the ground can be seen very briefly in the background as Roman and the strange person are walking along this path here Roman then goes on to say it's been about 11 years since I've been here they're making conversation as they're walking down this path here and Roman then asks the strange person if he has any family members here and he says no my dad is not buried here and then all of a sudden Roman stops right about here we can see this wall and the background and we come to find out that it is Samuel Jacob's son he has been following Roman ever since he got out of prison and he said I was trying to figure out where the right spot was to do this at I've been following you ever since you got out and then he goes and pulls a gun on him all of that entire scene was filmed right here underneath of this bridge I'll try and line up some shots here so when Samuel pulls the gun on Roman he hesitates he can't do it Roman tells him to do whatever he has to do and he can't pull the trigger so he gets really frustrated and he walks right over here and sits right along this little concrete little strip I guess you could say it is and he starts crying and then the camera goes back to Roman standing right there and right here and then he just walks off camera and then after Samuel tells him to leave Samuel is sitting over here along the wall and Roman is walking towards the camera this way okay I think that's gonna be a wrap on the filming locations for the movie aftermath thank you guys so much for following me around today I greatly appreciate it and I'm still looking for a few locations myself I'm looking for Roman's house Jacob's house the plane crash site and the memorial site so if anyone has any information about those please feel free to message me I will drop links to my social media below and hopefully I can get a part two going and uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, give me one of these. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time on Jordan's Film Quest.